Welcome everybody to the July 2020 Health Made Simple webinar. We are uh, we're talking about animal communication today. And, yes, we um, are. But Brian, um, yes. Before we get into that, um, God, you know, I I had a memory from a long time ago because you know we're both kind of old now. Right? So yeah. am I. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lydia, you are too. This Miss Lydia. Yeah, right. So y'all remember like phones. Phones. Right? Like and and I'm not old enough to remember this, but Brian is. Brian I had a bag right. phone in my car, if oh, you wow. remember right. <laughs> it would it would fit just between the bucket seats and it was so cool. Right next yes, right next to his eight tracks. Right, there's my eight-track player, yep. Right, yep. and it was like the coolest technology ever, and here we are, fast forward, right? So many years, and everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a cell phone. And, um, and so, but nobody ever questioned how it worked, right? Like, nobody ever questioned how the telephone worked, just the regular telephone worked. You know, every, and, and at first when it started, you know, like the telephone, you picked it up and you asked the operator to connect you into that person. But nobody really asked how that worked. And it's been a technology that's evolved to the point where it's just completely transformed our entire lives. Um, and so um, we kind of think of, you know, Brian and I think that way of animal communication because it's evolved so much. It's always been there. It's always been there and it's evolved so much that it's finally coming really, I don't know if it's really in mainstream yet, but it's just definitely be becoming more acceptable. And um, so we wanted, we are so excited, like I wasn't going to be able to make it today, and Brian was so excited that he was going to be able to host Miss Lydia, and then I was able to make it, I'm like, no, 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 I'm doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> um, Miss Lydia, Miss Lydia Hibby, uh, she is one of our nearest and dearest friends. We don't get to spend very much time with her at all. However, um, she's just this person that has this incredible energy, and we met, oh my God, 20 years ago in the Hot Springs in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Brian and I had just taken an animal communication class, mm -hmm. and of course, we were sitting in the hot tub listening to you chat with your friends. Yes. I even remember which tub it was. <laughs> it was the one that was the middle one down by the river that was in the middle there. And they were on the backside and we were on just us two. We joined in when they were in her talking. And they were, it was amazing what they were talking about. Do you remember what it was, Donna? I do. Do you? Do, would you like to share? No, I'm going to let you keep going. No, it didn't. So Lydia had been talking to somebody or in, and it was about, and, and we were like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm an animal communicator. And we're like, oh, yay. We thought we knew everything because we had just taken a class, mind you. And yep. so we're like, oh, yeah, we just got done taking our animal communication class. <laughs> and then um, Brian says, well, you know, I, I do have this one horse. And that was the only thing that came out of his mouth was I have this one horse. You want to tell the rest of the story? Yeah, right? and then Lydia, Lydia looked right at me and she goes, oh, that's a brown sorrel that has that little star going down the front of his head. And, and he's, he's got something going on with him. I says, yes, what is it? Well, he's got this going on inside of his belly and this is happening here. And he's really feeling bad that this is happening. I'm like, whoa, my head was just exploding. <laughs> and we were, we were off and running. And so um, we are so excited because, Brian, you guys know us. You hear us talk all the time. Um, so I want to really introduce to you guys uh, Miss Lydia Hibby. She um, is an amazing horsewoman. Um, and she's an incredible animal communicator. And, and she's got such a fascinating story 
uh, about it and her credentials like we couldn't even begin to list them so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna cut to the chase and i'm just gonna go right for the big one so y'all she does uh animal communication for jay leno so she's oh, been I've on the day people yeah she's been on the jay leno sh show several times as the animal communicator and so <laughs> that is like there you go um so welcome miss lydia we are so excited to have you I'm glad to see you with the modern technology right who would know <laughs> i know right like we don't even question that right we don't even question that yes but we question energy work mm -hmm. question well, energy i think work. everybody I think should be skeptical, skeptical of something, something. Because yes. otherwise you just would go into everything, everything and that's not a good thing to do. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today, um, I would really like to kind of give everybody just like the behind the scenes view, like what's behind that curtain, because it's been, um, because we can't see it. It's not a tangible thing. And it's also not something that everybody is doing on a regular basis. So there's still a mystery surrounding it and a lot of skepticism about the effectiveness and the accuracy of it and um and it really isn't like it really it really isn't we all have this within us but we just haven't kind of knocked on that door yeah as children we all did it i mean this is me on the cover of my book talking to a goose that's actually me my dad took that picture. And so, you know, it never even occurred to me. I, so all kids have the ability. We all have the ability. It's that nagging feeling like something's wrong and then you act on it. And then I've had people say to me, well, I did act on it and nothing happened. And I said, well, you probably listened and you prevented or circumvented whatever the issue was. So it's really just trusting your inner voice. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So we have two grandbabies. We have a two year old and an almost four year old grandbaby. And our daughter just messaged us a picture a couple weeks ago. Um, a little bird had been injured. And my grands, my 40 year old grandson, man, he was on like he was like, and that bird let him come right up to him. And then of course, he grabbed his red lights. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. I love that. And, and we couldn't post the video because there wasn't enough bandwidth, mm -hmm. but um, he stayed with that bird until that bird flew off. Oh, love of, that. Right, but here's the yeah. kicker. He's, it's the video. It's, Mommy, I did it. I did it. I saved the bird. And she oh. goes, well, what did you do? She goes, I red-lighted him and I sang him two songs. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I my really God. Love that. I love that. You can't be so proud. <laughs> right? I know it. And it's just it, the innocence, right? Like we're not, they're not programmed. Mm -hmm. They're not programmed. So for everybody, um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to just do a Q and a with Lydia and I'm going to let her talk. Um, cause she's so fascinating to listen to. She does, she does readings. Um, that is her primary that's what she's been doing for how many years have you been doing? 34 years. She's been doing this y'all for 34 years mm -hmm. to say that she is an expert at it is a huge understatement. Mm -hmm. She is currently located in Panama city beach, Florida, the Gulf Yay. coast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Moved from um, California but, in September. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so she, you still go back to California, right? Oh yes. I was just back two weeks ago and I did like, 50 horses in one weekend and I did 40 something dogs the following weekend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of skip to the chase because I know everybody's like, Oh yes. Readings and how much and da 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 da. Um, I'm going to tell you guys, she is so good. Your bookings for readings are only what 15 minutes long. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And most of you might not think that that would be a long enough time because there's a lot of other animal communicators out there and they're really good, but they typically run 30 minutes to an hour because they're still working on their craft. Mm -hmm. Lydia, it's just like when she talks to your animals, it's just like her and I chatting right now. So you only need, so her appointments are literally 15 minutes long and be ready to record it or write it down because she is going to just kind of like machine gun you with all of the details. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how fast it comes from the animals too. 
Yeah. Yeah. So why don't like, so t- so you, you were talking to a goose as a child. And so you've talked to the animals as, as a child. So how did you decide to make this your career? Oh, well, I went into veterinary medicine. I was a vet tech for a long time. And I also worked at a stable there. And so my mom would take me out on nature walks when I was little. So that was a natural fit for me to start working with horses when I was younger. Um, And then I actually went to school to be a vet tech, graduated two years after that and thought that was going to be my career as an x-ray technician. So I worked at four different hospitals back East and then worked at the cat practice in New York city. And then I moved to New Jersey to work at a horse ranch. And they said, this woman from California is going to talk to the animals. And I was a former New Yorker. I was like, what, what? I forgot. I had done it as a child. So Beatrice Slidecker came out and a lot of people would be familiar with her. She was like one of the first ones, she and Penelope Smith years ago in the seventies. So the first day I couldn't watch her. I was so busy doing, taking care of the horses I was caring for and still working at the hospital. And people kept running up like she, knew about all this. And I was the biggest skeptic. I was like, whatever. I have three bridges and the Statue of Liberty I can send her, you know, sell her. So finally, by the second day, she said, I want to talk to you. And I said, why? And she goes, because I want to train somebody. And I'm like, train somebody? She said, yes. She said, this is ability that everybody has, but I want to train someone because I'm not the only person who can do it. And I said, "Mm, okay. And then she said, are any of the animals here yours? And I said, no. And she's like, got frustrated. And she's like, well, I want to prove it to you. Where do you have a pet? And I said, yes, it's 40 miles away. And she goes, go get a photo. And I'm thinking, a photo? So I went upstairs because I lived over the bar and I brought this picture down to my collie and right out the gate, just like I did with Brian, she told me everything about that dog. And I was like, "Uh, uh, okay, what happened? And then she said, well, you're a vet tech, you're a show groom. She goes, I want you to teach people. If you're interested, here's my card. And off she went. And I was like, oh, Lord, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, so a couple of months later, I had her come back to New York and teach a class. And I, that's how I learned. It's three hours in the morning, three hours of practice. And again, she said, look, you want to come to California? So I moved there and became her apprentice for a while, for about four years, because I was still working at a vet hospital. And so finally, she just said, I'm getting swamped because she was on Johnny Carson and all these other shows. And she said, I need you to help me. And so God moves in mysterious ways. And I happily got shoved into what I'm doing now. My mom used to say I wanted to be the guardian angel and fairy godmother for animals. And she's like, you kind of are now. And I said, okay. You are. You are. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are. Yeah. Absolutely. You are. Yeah. So I feel very blessed, but everybody has the ability. It's hard to step back and do your own animals. It's kind of like going to a doctor A doctor shouldn't work on their own family members because it's, they are like have too many preconceived notions. So your first right. impressions are what you go on. That's what I go on. Right. So your teacher was, so we, we've got a couple of questions. So your teacher was Penelope Smith. Is that no, right? No, you're just Lidecker. And she and Penelope Beatrice. kind of came out at the same time. So yeah, Beatrice Slidecker is my mentor. Beatrice Slidecker. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yay. Awesome. And she's pretty much retired now. I talked to her a couple of weeks ago. She's doing really well. So yeah. Yay. Well, you know, it's, it's an, in, we're in interesting times, right? In the world right now. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, planetary alignments and movements going on that really, um, the astrologers were predicting like that 2020 was going to be like, like no other. And it certainly has, has proven to be that. Um, and, um, so it's just, and it, and so I think what's happening is, you know, as the rebalance of the world and the shifting and the moving and the, you know, working from home and re- really reevaluating your whole life and your priorities. Um, and, you know, we all, I all, I'm a self-help junkie and energy freak, and I'm always digging and delving and exploring and whatnot. And, you know, they keep saying, what did you do as a child? Like, what, what came naturally to you as a child? Go do that as an adult how did you behave as a child? Like what made you happy? Go do that. Mm -hmm. And so it's such a blessing for you that you were able that somebody recognized within you. So really, you know, I mean, it may not seem early on in your adult life, but really early on that said, Hey, you need to be, you're here, but you really need to be doing this. Absolutely. And and Mm -hmm. so that work really just doesn't feel like work. 
No, I feel very blessed to do what I do. Absolutely. And it, it, every day I'm amazed. I always say a prayer before I do anything, because as far as I'm concerned, it, the energy comes from the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, okay. And people ask me, and I'm like, well, Noah had the animals on the boat. I believe in that. It's St. Francis of Assisi, so it shouldn't be that different. And people do it all the time, you know. So, And animals are so real and so present, and they read our energy so quickly. And, and they're just, a lot of them are here to take care of us as much as we take care of them, which I love. Right. Oh, absolutely. A ab absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. So we did have, so I'm going to jump to some questions. Somebody, um, HM Clover Hill. I don't know who HM is, but HM Clover Hill, they were so sweet. They actually emailed us yesterday with some really great questions. So I wanted awesome. to kind of like pop in um, how do you know that the animals, that your animals are truly communicating with you? And it's not your vivid imagination putting the thoughts into your mind because you want to be able to communicate with them. Oh, that's a great thing. So usually kind of, I, I say to people, ask one basic question, like ask your animal, what does he like to do and wait and you'll get a flash or they'll come through to you when you're not even thinking about them driving home, people that are still out and about, or when you first uh, go to sleep or first wake up when something comes across your visual screen or emotional screen, depending upon how you breathe energy, then that's them going, Hey, I need you. And then a lot of times people just ask me the question, my animal comes and stares at me. It's so unnerving. Like, and I say, they're just reading your thoughts. You're like the best CNN scrawl. Everything that you think about goes across your visual screen and they pick up on it. So those are the two ways that you can check in with them. Cool. And um, so you had said something earlier about like, you're not necessarily that like, if you're trying to communicate with your own animal, they're not necessarily going to be the rest, best read because they kind of like, tell you what you want to hear. Or Sometimes or they'll say I'm okay. You know, like, I don't want you worried. I'm okay. Or some of them have peace, love and stereo headphones. I don't want to listen to you. <laughs> like kids. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm just a dog. Don't talk to me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? And, and so for people that are kind of dabbling in this and want to kind of tune in, like, maybe it would be best, would you say, hey, just try, try it on, like, a friend's animal or one that you don't really have a super emotional connection with? I think that's a great idea. A lot of people have been doing that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, super cool. That's awesome. So... Um, I know that you travel to go do readings, um, but can you do long distance communication? Yeah, two days a week. I just finished up actually three days. And when I'm done with you, I have more calls tonight. I've talked to people in Dubai, Scotland, across the United States, Cayman Islands. So you would call up and say, hey, it's Donna. And my horse's name is, and I would direct my attention and talk to you and them simultaneously. So yeah. I do two days a week where I do fun. I mean, I love doing it in person, but I haven't cloned myself yet. I know. <laughs> we're, we're I know. And, and you have like, and well, and and we have done that. We have called going, Lydia, we need help. <laughs> we can't figure this out. And she's, you're just amazing. Like, oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, so Tony says, Lydia, would you agree or what would you say is the age mentality of the animal? Oh, that's a great question. It really runs the gamut because animals are old souls or young souls. An old soul is one that you look in their eyes and know that there's way more going on and they, they get it and they're helpful. And the young souls are the gimme, gimme kids. They meet you at the gate or at the door going, feed me. And then they disappear and you're like, oh, what happened? So that mentality level is not going to be at the level of an older soul. That's kind of how I read that. So, um, and I've even talked to like baby rattlesnakes that were old souls, even though they were babies and move them. So that's what makes it so fun. Cause you never, it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get when you start to talk to them. <laughs> I love that, but they're all yummy. Like just, it's just like somebody that is an extrovert and gets to talk, but they get to talk to like all of these amazing animals um so donna there's there's one there from tammy clayton that would be interesting to ask she says what if my dog is deaf oh that's a great question 
it doesn't matter because it's nonverbal communication. I love that question. I'm so glad you asked. I mean, also people ask me, I had a gal yesterday. I just got a horse from Germany. She thought that he would only understand German. And I said, a tree is a tree in any language. So whether they're deaf and or a different language doesn't matter. So that's a great question. Thank you. That's, yeah, that, that's a great, well, and I was kind of leading up to, you just did a reading for me a couple of weeks ago on um, one of our horses because we were just having such issues with her and we'd just been struggling for months. And, um, and I had a huge aha when you were telling me, like you did the reading and it really had to do like, so not only do you communicate with them, but it's the attitude that comes through. Like, because I'm like, oh, honey, oh, you're so sweet. I'm like, love, 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 love to all of my animals. And then you did this reading for one of my saddlebreds. And the saddlebred is like, look, sister. And like, attitude and aren't I beautiful? And, and I was like, wait a minute. I'm like the little lost puppy that just keeps going, oh my God, <laughs> right? Some of them have big attitudes, oh yeah. I had one horse yesterday who kind of like stepped up to me in my mind and said, you're not gonna tell me what to do. And I'm like, oh no, honey, I don't have to tell you what to do. I can ask you though. And the gal was standing right next to her horse. She, and she goes, well, she just walked off and swished her tail. She said, oh, wait a minute, she's turned around and she's coming back. <laughs> Because I was like, if you're done, you're done. She's like, I'm not done. She comes marching right up and looks right at her. She goes, I've never seen her act that way before. I said, well, that's, sometimes that's what happens. Yeah. So sometimes, it's, you know, so for me, that was a big awareness because I was like, the, the information you gave us was spot on. Absolutely incredible. You helped us really pinpoint, you know, her issue, which was fabulous. Thank you. Um, but the really the big awareness for me was like i need to i need to quit act treating her like she's just this little you know two-year-old flower because she's you know what running around with this whole attitude and in order for me to be able to be a better horsewoman and communicate with her better i kind of have to step up to the plate because there's no way like if a human came up and was throwing me attitude that i'd be like oh you're so sweet look at how beautiful you are i would be like hey wait a minute <laughs> so it Right. Am I, am I right on that? Like, oh yeah. And there are a lot of animals that don't like baby talk. They're like, Oh, please tell her to talk to me in a normal tone of voice. I hate baby talk. You know, they're just not into that. So yeah. <laughs> right. I, and you know, I don't know that. Like, I don't know that the general masses know that. So That's here's a really good question for you. Mm -hmm. And this is why I was waiting for this one to come up. Mm -hmm. They're asking, do animals still communicate once they cross over and do they have to communicate oh. through a current animal? Oh, that's, a, that's also a great question. Um, a lot of times, and okay, so the, the short version is, yes, they can come back and communicate with other animals and with you. And I usually say to people, it's like you get a glimpse of them or you have a dream about them. Um, sometimes what they'll do is they'll coach another animal. Like I had that a couple of days ago. This one dog said, oh, well, the other one who crossed over showed me an image, said that mom really likes when I do this one behavior. So he started doing it. And so the woman's like, where did he get that from? I said, well, the other one that crossed over came and told him. So, I mean, they're only allowed to be here for a short amount of time. And I love the movie Ghost because I think it really kind of gives a, a whole overview about the whole thing. And, and even uh, John Edwards described it. We know that we can dive to a bottom of a pool, but we know at some point we have to come up and take a breath of air. So without a physical body to come down to this vibration level, they can't stay very long unless they're in what I call a 48 hour window. If an animal is going to be crossing over soon, that becomes that guardian angel. They will come and stand by for quite a long time. So, but yeah, that's, that's also a great question. Great question. Yeah, that's super cool. So somebody else had a question. Um, what is it that you like about doing communication in person? Oh, well, <laughs> I love to be able to get my hands on them because I do a lot of physical therapy. I, thanks to you and the torch, I took acupuncture class way before I ever knew you. And then when I started to get the torch to be able to relay that and use that, I do a lot of Reiki. 
Um, sometimes I can really pinpoint further for an owner physically. I can still describe it over the phone. And horses are my first love. So I love being around them. I mean, I do a lot of dogs, cats and everything else. But um, and, and I've had people say in this, even in this last time, I had a couple of clients who said, I've always talked to you over the phone. This is the first time in person. And you said a lot of the same things. And I said, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> because once I'm done with somebody, this brain <laughs> shuts off, you know, and I go to the next person, but right. she's like, Oh, that horse mentioned that one thing last time. How interesting. Or the, or the horse will remind me or the animal will remind me like, I told you about this. How come we haven't done it? You know, and they'll re remind me of it too. So. Right. That's super cool. That's super cool. Now I, I, um, I know, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to answer it. Ask you a question anyways lost pets. I don't do lost pets anymore because it's so heart wrenching. In the United States, the last statistic is 100,000 animals are lost every day. So wow. I just got overwhelmed by that. I do have a referral, Tim Link, on my website. And there's also a gal, Teresa Wagner, who does contact animals that have crossed over. That's really their specialty. And so those are my referrals. So people can find that on the website. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, uh from an emotional perspective, mm -hmm. not only are you dealing with the emotionality of the animal, but you're also dealing with the emotionality of the owners. And before GoPros came out and nobody knew what they were, that's what it was like. When I talk to an animal, I step into them. So if they were lost, I was seeing things racing past and they don't know what a Texaco sign is. But if they looked up, I would know what that icon. And usually I was like a day or two behind them because they were racing around so fast being scared. And typically what an animal will do is if they have never gotten out of a place, they go counterclockwise. I don't know why that is. It's something that Beer just told me about. And it, even when I went to Australia, I thought, well, with the equator, you know, they would go the right way. But we tracked a couple of lost pets and they still went to the left. So I always say to people, if God forbid you lose somebody, go out wherever you lost them and go start going counterclockwise and make it wider and wider. So that's the best way to try to give them a little head start about that. Right. So we've got, um, so Julie is online and she's one of our uh, fabulous clients and she's, um, she's also an animal communicator as well. So she awesome. specializes in lost pens as well. Oh, super. Uh, but, but she's asking lots of questions. Um, and so, cause I know it's not like her mainstay. Oh, um, you know, there's enough work for everybody. Bless. No, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But, but she has a, some really great questions. And so like you, you touched on like that you did Reiki and you did energy healing. So do you do like medical issues and intuition at the same time? Can you yes. go yes. dig, dig into that a little bit? So when someone calls me about an animal, the first thing I ask is what they want to tell me for a moment or two. And then I do what I call a body scan. And I tell people right away, I am not a vet. I was a vet tech. I was a show groom. I can get into them and I will give you information. I think the benefit of my training is then I can say to you, wow, I feel like I had a horse yesterday. His glands were swollen. And I kept saying it's underneath his right gland. And she texted me this morning and validated. I said, now you need to go to your vet and get this lab test and do that and, and give them the information of why those things are so important. But when I step into them, I feel physically everything that's going on with them. So I can put equipment on them. I can smell what they're smelling. I had a dog years ago tell me about gave me some smell and I was like I think I know what that smell was but it turns out the client's son was cooking meth in the backyard the only way I knew what that smell was is because in Riverside I lived in a very inexpensive neighborhood and there was a meth lab across the way otherwise I wouldn't have know what the smell is but so when I become them I see taste and feel and experience and at the same time it's all happening I can verbalize that and give that to the owner and hopefully it makes sense to them and then I can ask the animal is it happening now or when did it happen in the past? And they'll start saying, well, a couple of months ago, this started happening, especially the horse with the lymph glands. Right. And the woman was like, oh, I thought he was a little off, but she wasn't riding him. You know, the barn was closed and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so I always say to people, sit with a notebook and one on the beginning of the month and start asking your animals questions. And you can just sit quietly, close your eyes and just say, how do you feel? And then feel what your head feels like. And then if you get like a ringing in your ears, for example, then your next question is, is it me or is it them? And if it goes away in less than a minute, that's how you know it's them. And in the beginning, as the other person brought up the great question, you don't know if it's them right away. You're going to have to just start 
writing things down. And once your animals know you're open, then they will start sending you stuff when you're not expecting it. And that's happened to you and Brian, I know, and even before you took the class. So you'll be driving home going, oh, I think my mare is going to be give birth now. Ah, you know, or one of the other animals will say, so-and-so, you better go check on so-and-so. So once they know you're open, they'll start sending you stuff and then you have to act on it. Yeah, I, I dragged, um, I've got one mare who's very chatty and we had just built our house, just moved in, but didn't have the fencing done. So my horses were staying in the neighbor's pasture and I woke Brian up at two o'clock in the morning because my one horse was like, hey, we're thirsty. And I literally woke up at two o'clock in the morning and went, oh my God, the horses are out of water. We've got to go get water. Zora wants water. And Brian's like, Really? <laughs> he's like, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well, I'll go out there. I don't need you. And he's like, well, honey, it's Florida. We have coyotes. All right. Sure enough, we tromp through the field. And here, here's the mares, Zora, just standing at the water bucket. Waiting. Where have you been? <laughs> he's bone dry. And we, are, we were just like, oh, my gosh. So um, it, it comes in handy. Mm -hmm. it comes in handy. It Absolutely. Comes in handy. Um, that's super cool. So um, following on that about the health problems and things like that, do they, um, do they tell you what the cure is or do they tell you what they need to fix it? Okay. Most of the time they don't know the cure because they don't have medical knowledge, but they'll give me things that they need. So the best example that's in the book is I talked to an iguana, orange iguana, and it was long distance. I was taking care of my mom and the person called up and gave me the animal's name Kira. And for some reason, this one time I didn't ask what it was. I got orange and my assumption was it was a golden retriever. And I said to her, oh, your dog is licking the kitchen floor and whatever chemical is there is making it sick. And she goes, okay, I got to tell you, you're right, but this is an orange iguana. I was like, oh, I don't know iguana medicine. <laughs> and she said, you're onto something. So iguanas taste with their tongue. And her housekeeper had decided to come in and mop the floor with pine salt. And so once it evaporates, everybody thought it's safe. Well, the iguana was licking. And so she said, okay. And, and then he, Kira gave me, he said, I need sweet potatoes. I was like, okay. And she turned out that she talked to the vet and the vet said, yes, sweet potatoes is very cleansing for the liver. And that's what would detoxify it. That's how I found out that sweet potatoes help dogs and, and uh, reptiles about detoxifying your liver. Other herbs would be milk thistle and things like that. So he knew what was wrong and also knew how to help himself. Or they'll say, I need a banana because they need more potassium. So sometimes they know instinctually something that will help them. And then you get the other side, like, I need a hamburger. <laughs> I've had a lot of horses say, hey, a beer wouldn't kill me. And I'm like, well, yeah, maybe it wouldn't, but maybe you only have a little bit of it, you know. <laughs> well, you know, we do live in Florida. Yeah. That is an old-fashioned cure for, or, you know, a lot of barns around here do feed their horses beer because they think that it helps with the anhydrosis. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I've, I've, you've, you've done readings for us, so I, I know, I know that you all, you always go. That's why I said, like, you're always like going, ding, 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 do this, do this, do this, and sometimes it's just they'll tell you other things like that's not health related that they have preferences on. So, what's like the strangest thing that you've ever had, like that oh. an animal tell you for a preference? Wow, preference. Uh, or sometimes it gets down to individual supplements, including my horse, who I saw a couple weeks ago, and he's staying at a friend's house. And I was always mixing his supplements. And Brenda said, he's not eating what you're giving him now. So I went out to him, his name is Traveler. And he goes, I don't need that one thing that's in there. So I brought out all the bags. And he'd like sniffed each one and he looked at the one he didn't want and it was electrolytes. And he's like, he backed up, I don't need it. And I said, okay. So we reconfigured stuff and he's back to eating his supplements again. Okay. So they'll sometimes they'll do things like that, that they instinctually know. Yeah. That, that, well, it, an interesting thing when I uh, put together our essential oil and red light therapy class, one of the things that I uncovered was the fact that the olfactory system in horses are almost as sensitive as dogs are. Uh, yes, absolutely. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's not a very common fact, mm -hmm. um, but that's also why like if you're doing essential oils or herbs, the self-selection method, you don't even have to 
open the bags or open the bottles on the essential oils because they're smelling, their sense of smell is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Can I tell a story? Sure. I don't know if you remember this, Lydia, but this is about 15 years ago. I was up in Canada and mm -hmm. I was working on this horse that was severely underweight. They only had it for like three months mm -hmm. and it was a large warm, warm blood. And I went to put my hands on the horse and I don't do as good a communication nowhere near like you, but every once in a while it comes mm -hmm. and I'm in this whole group and all of a sudden it's back up. And I said, the horse just asked me, where's this, where's this 10? He's missing this 10 year old girl that he used to be with and he got taken away. Mm. And I said, I don't know what it really means. And then I introduced her to you and she called you and you told her that in a past life, this is what I want people to understand that you don't just do this life. You do past lives. Mm -hmm. She was the little girl that that horse was trying to reconnect and was losing the weight because she wasn't recognizing him. Mm, interesting. And once you told her that story, the horse turned around, put the weight back on and they reconnected. Mm. So I wow, think that's, that's beautiful. Amazing. So thank yeah. you very much. Wow, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of animals like when people will cross people's paths, meeting the two of you and all the different things that how we're interconnected. So yeah, a lot of animals do come back to be with people and it's because we're here for quite a long time and they don't have the bodies to sustain themselves unless they're an iguana or a bird or things like that. So yeah. And when the internet became big, which now I'm really dating myself, I had people starting to call me going, I saw this horse on the internet. Why was I drawn to him? And I said, there's a reason there's a connection there. People are finding animals on pet finding and stuff and then they would drive 3,000 miles to find an animal when there's one in their backyard it was just meant to be so because I do a lot of pre-purchase exams on animals or even matching with uh, litter evaluations and stuff and I had a gal that called me two weeks ago there's a litter in Ireland she goes I don't know where I came up with this but that's the dog I want and so the breeder is gonna fly the dog over and yep. and she said she had him like last night he knew everything about her house walked through her place like he had been there the other dogs were like oh here comes Angus nobody had an upset it was like he was meant to be so right right that's that's so cool um and and so yeah and i hate i sometimes we we ignore that but literally we had a guest show up we have a little airbnb apartment on our property you, you stayed there and so um she showed up two days ago didn't tell us that she had dogs oh boy so she's got dogs <laughs> and so last night she says oh yeah this three-year-old doberman is really not my dog it was my friend's dog and it needs a big yard and it needs a new home and what do you think you can do and i'm just like crap ah oh. so and? <laughs> no i have four dogs so yes. we're, we're trying we're trying to find her a good home we're trying well, to dobies are great dogs you shouldn't have any problem finding a home for them they love yeah. their people and they're just i mean there are a lot of breeds that i have some contention with because what they're bred for and what people have to deal with is difficult but a dobie is an easy dog to live with so yay so can you expand on that a little bit about the different breeds because if i'm not mistaken you you were a professional dog handler and you've shown at westminster is that correct? yes i showed my own dogs yes yes and we we helped a couple of clients well i mean d you know different breeds have different personalities and they did that top 100 breeds who's smarter and everybody put uh border collies at the top and they are incredibly intelligent but they're also so well-bred that they love their job and so one of the biggest challenges is if somebody gets a dog and they don't know its behavior Behavior, or they get a mixed bred dog, which now is a hybrid dog, and they don't understand the combination of breeds and why they act the way they do. Like, for example, Chihuahuas are great dogs, but they're the tiniest guard dog. If they're sitting in someone's lap, you don't pet them because they're going to bite you. They're going to take care of it. Right. And or getting a shepherd, which Beatrice still has shepherds, and I live with a lot of them. They're great dogs, too, but they don't share well with others. They were bred to be one on one. That's why they're great police dogs, etc. So if you have other dogs and you bring a shepherd home, he's going to park himself right next to you and not let everybody else come around. And the other animals are like, hey, what up with this? We were here first. So I have to kind of help negotiate and navigate that situation. So it can be done, but I always say to people, you should really research a breed that you're drawn to so, to know if you can live with it. Because once you're emotionally attached, you're attached. Right. Or breeds oh, of horses for the same reason. So. Yeah, I sometimes do things backwards, but you know, that would be my human design uh, three, five profile <laughs> where it's just, you know, Hey, just jump on in and it'll be a great learning experience. 
<laughs> well, and sometimes I feel like you have to trust that when you make those decisions, they're the right ones. I believe that, you know, God pushes us in different places. And for some reason, when you take on and you're helping out this Doberman now, you're going to find the right person. It was supposed to come to you to find its right person. Right. And if you hadn't made the connection, how was it going to find that right person? I believe I in that know. totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was quite a lot of fun. We put her over in our 13 acre pasture this morning with her, her litter mate and um, those girls, it was just fun to watch them hunt. Like, like it was just pretty cool to watch. Like they were, they were so excited to be able to run and stretch their legs and use their nose. It was, mm -hmm. it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, the neighbors are kind of thinking something about us because we just fenced it up, and now all of a sudden we have Dobermans protecting our whole boundary. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad they're not filming Magnum P.I., who I've met Tom Selleck. He's lovely, but then you'd have those killer dogs, you know, but he's cool. Exactly. <laughs> but with that, I've, we've got a lot of people asking about their animals, and I know we don't have time to go into all those animals. So they're, they're all asking, can you give us an example of a reading on an animal? Would you be willing to do uh, that, or is your mind oh, oh, scattered? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, what's, oh, the I Dobermans, thought... what's the Dobermans that there that you are trying to rehome? No, no, no. I'm, I was going to have you do one on one of our dogs, just to give an example. Oh, yes. Me. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. So I have a dog. He's a, uh, he's, he's a hound dog, and he, we rescued him. You probably have talked to him before. With the brown ears, the one with the yep. white and brown. What's his name again? Teagues. Okay, Teagues. That's interesting. Okay. Well, we, his real name is Rufus E. Teagues, E for Elvis, because he's a hound dog. <laughs> but anyway, he's he's been very lethargic the last three months, and we're mm. just kind of wondering what's going on with him right now. So when I just asked him, he just said, you again? I said, what can I tell you? Your dad asked me. <laughs> he's like, I wasn't prepared for this. He's very kind of, uh, he's very private. He doesn't like to default. And he goes, how many people are going to hear this? I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm worried about his kidneys and his liver. Remind me how old he is again? He's about seven now, right? Okay, um, so the liver, you, you probably know this, but most people don't. The liver has three lobes or three fingers. It looks like an old baseball glove. His mid middle one is enlarged. Well, that doesn't have to be necessarily a bad thing because it could be temporary, but it's been that way for a while. And then he said to me a couple of things. He said, you had neighbors or some, some kind of spraying pesticide or something about a month ago. He said that made him sick. And, and mm. he said, I, he's always been trying to kind of hide his symptoms because he doesn't want anybody to worry. That's the classic, I'm fine. Don't worry about me kind of thing. And did you all, did Donna put the um, pad on him? Because he said somebody put, or did you put the pad on him? Because he said it really helped. Yes, I did. So and I, I put it that. over that area. Okay, yeah. So, and I think I shared this with both of you a long time ago when Beatrice and I were working with Dr. Marvin Kane, he was like one of the top acupuncture veterinarians years ago, and he's passed over equine. Um, we came up with what we call an alarm point, which is past the last rib, and it's not on any of the conventional meridians. So that's why to put the pad right there will help. And a lot of people have asked me about, and for example, in Dobermans, they have liver problems. They will actually turn around and try to suck their sides. Or when you see any horse or dog doing self acupuncture or a hot spot, that's what they're doing and they will do it to the point of annihilating themselves so if they're licking on their their forelegs and things like that that's usually kidney and heart line if they're going after their chest those are respiratory again kind of going with your points that you give to people but i always say to people if there's a hot spot there they're trying to jump start themselves and i did see a horse a couple of weeks ago that was like chewing on its chest and what it turned out it was around a fire though all the smoke and fire and he was inhaling a lot of stuff and once we mm. addressed his respiratory issues he so i i think with teagues you really have to watch his liver okay um, we will. And he's shown me all the points. And the other thing, maybe you bring this up with people is all the acupuncture points for horses start in their ears. You all know this. And with dogs and cats, it starts in their toes. So the two classic questions are, I can't shave my horse's ears, lady. What's the deal with that? And when I show them the chart, they're like, oh, I had no idea I was affecting their whole body that way. Or I can't trim my dog's nails. A simple thing, but it's actually sending shockwaves with their acupuncture points and stuff. So I always kind of mm -hmm. remind people of that too. So. so his little sidekick is a dog that looks almost like him. His name is Henry. He's a little um, um, Patterdale Terrier. Oh, how cute. And then the two of them me. came, he came back beat up about two weeks ago, and Teague's had a couple marks on, but, but the T Patterdale Terrier was pretty beat up. And I know he jumped in front of Teague's, and Teague's kind of helped out. We're always kind of wondering what he ran into. Mm, he said a couple of wildy coyotes. That's exactly what we thought. 
Mm-hmm. You're so good. <laughs> and and he's and he said that his mini me ran up and tried to say go out of the way and leave and the wild coyote was like oh, bring it buddy and he said then I got in trouble and Teague's was like okay now I have to save your behind and so that's how they kind of got into it so <laughs> and, and and that describes them exactly. So Lydia one of the so thank you for doing that you guys that sure. was reading like obviously like like lots of information in there and very very detailed very detailed um what how do how do how do animals refer to their owners that was a great oh oh that is a great most of the time mom and dad most of the time it's mom and dad yeah and then if it's a child's animal then the adult becomes grandma or grandpa because i had some lady yesterday and she goes i'm not a grandma i said well it's your daughter's dog and she said yes i said well you're the grandma and she goes well i want to be a cool grandma i said fine be a cool grandma but that's how they see things (laughs) right right yeah (laughs) that's super cool now another question this comes in from canada from london canada uh from jan one of our other great friends that we've met through the Pirelli network um she wants to know if her 30 year old like can you tell like so she has a 30 year old horse and and so can you like will they divulge to you whether they're getting ready to transition or not oh absolutely and usually when people call me they already have that feeling and that I've had, I have a couple of regular clients that their animals have been going through all kinds of issues the last couple of months. And so it's like, it's time to check in again, but yes. Yeah. The best part about what I do is a, everybody can do it. I know they don't believe that, but they need to believe that. And when you have that prompting that, Oh, I better check on whether you call the vet or have someone like me or someone else do it, but that's them letting you know that they're getting into that moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, so Stacy Powers, she must know you. She says, Oh, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> when, when I took a class from Lydia, I talked to a bird and asked who, who the bird's animal friend was. The bird said, not the cat, not, <laughs> not the cat. The bird really made me laugh and um, still cracks her up. So I thought <laughs> that was so fun. Uh, oh, it's in a class near Reno. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. That was a fun class. Yeah. It's hard for us to keep track of you because you're all over. Yeah. Well, not as much as, but yes, <laughs> it's hard for me to keep track of me. <laughs> um, so um, d- does anybody need to like, if they want to have a reading done, Mm-hmm. Is there anything that they need to prepare for ahead of time? Um, well, that's a great question, too. Some people just want to know what their animals have to say. But if you have real questions, write them down and keep them with you. Because I open with the animal what they want to say. And a lot of times, they've picked up on what your questions are. So that's what happened yesterday. I did a couple of calls, and immediately the person said, well, I don't have my questions because you already answered them. It was the first few things the animal's like, no, I don't want a baby. Yes, I like my saddle. And the guy was like, okay. And then I, I asked them all the other things their training, their equipment, who are their friends, what they like to do, do the body scan. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Now, um, back to Teague's, but not really, because this just kind of envelops a whole bunch of dogs. So we just got done with the 4th of July. He's a dog, fireworks. He is Mm. just terrified. Is it, have you found that it's like a pretty common theme surrounding it because a lot of dogs have anxiety around like thunderstorms and fireworks yeah so when the thunder shirt came out i think it really helped a lot of animals but they didn't have the accurate instructions if you're going to use a thunder shirt you should put it on them on a nice day because the compression is associated with relaxation for that and a lot of times people got the knockoff shirts which will work but they didn't have the instructions and they would wait until there's a thunderstorm thinking oh i put this on now and the animal got forcibly calm down and that didn't work that's why ace promazine is used a lot of times temporarily as a tranquilizer but it only has a life of about 30 minutes because it's really used in anesthesia as a induction so i said to people try some comms forte some people try rescue remedy some people had um you know did white noise you can also do eft tapping there's a lot of solutions for that 
Um, but I found out about the Thunder shirts when I was back in Los Angeles and I had these two doxies who said, we wear tube tops. And I thought, okay, the women's dressing them up and they're having, and no, she goes, no, no. She goes, we're wearing the, they're wearing the prototypes for the Thunder shirts. This was like 18 years ago oh, and they wow. liked their tube tops. And every time they put them on, they were walking around like everything was fine. <laughs> that's hysterical. <laughs> That's, that's so, <laughs> so yeah. And, and that's the part of it that I just absolutely love that it's not just about asking them questions and getting information from them, but you really get like, you can, you guys can tell, I hope you can tell like with Lydia, like you really get the sense of what the animal's personality is like if they were a human, like how their talk, what their attitude really is. Cause sometimes we don't know. I mean, I knew my saddlebred was always kind of, you know, sassy and, you know, she knows she's beautiful, but man, I didn't think she had that much of an attitude. <laughs> They're funny. They're very funny. They are so funny. Um, can you tell, like, so one of the questions is, is can you, can they tell you what's going to happen in the, in the future? Okay, so they live in the present moment, which is what the best thing about animals is they teach us to be present. They can look forward to an event that you told them about, like we're going to a Pirelli conference or we're going to a horse show or we might be moving. And so they can look forward to that, but they don't know the future. No, they don't. They just, it's past and what's happening right now. And it brings up the point about, I've had a lot of people say, well, I don't have a lot of time or before all this, I don't have a lot of time. Animals mostly go on quality time, not quantity time. Okay. And, and so yesterday, today, and tomorrow run together for them in a straight line. So you should always leave your animal when you have to go out and just say, I'll be back soon. And then you left them with that relaxed feeling. But people don't do that. We feel guilty and they don't understand the guilt energy that confuses them. And then when you come home, you're feeling more guilty and you're like, oh, I left you. And the dog's like, well, oh, you just walked out and came back. I don't get it. So the calmer you can be when you're coming and going with any animal and tell them that you're going to be back soon and then say you're going to be late, then you think, oh, I'll be back soon. And you send them that energy and they're relaxed. So yes, they really and, teach us to live in the moment. And you really helped us with our dog Teagues on that too, because um, especially last year, Brian and I traveled exceptionally a lot. And um, he always, you know, he came to us with separation anxiety. Mm. And we were talking to you a couple of years ago and you're like, Donna, just change the, change that picture. Like, don't, don't like, don't, don't project to him that, oh my God, we're going to be leaving you for two weeks. And just you, and that's exactly what you said. And it's completely changed him. Like, he's like, Mr cool as a cucumber. Oh yeah, mom and dad will be back soon and no problems. So that was a, a, a super cool thing. Um, if animals live in the present moment and they were mistreated by previous owners, will they still remember that? Oh yes, they'll remember it. They may not want to talk about it, but they remember everything. Absolutely everything. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I've got one, well, I've got one last question related to the readings and then we'll, we'll kind of, because it's already been an hour. Oh my God, where did that go? <laughs> uh, what does, and this is from Alana Eagle Tree. She's out in Pagosa. Um, so what does licking the four legs mean on a dog? Usually there it's a heart line. So it either is emotional and or physical heart. So it's like a person chewing their fingernails, but it's not from an anxiety step standpoint. So that's what I was taught. And that's what it always feels to me. It's a hard line. Right. Correct. That's super cool. So can like, if somebody wanted to book a reading with you over the phone, um, do you do just one animal or do they like, how does that work? Or if they've got multiples and like, say, I want you to do a reading on Shelby and then Teagues, you know, go through everybody. How does that work? What does that So look? it's one animal for one 15 minute session. And if they want to do a group, then on a Thursday or Friday or some Saturday and Sundays, I've been booking like blocks where we can do like four at a time. And then we go one right after the other, but it's $60 for each one. And they can find all that information on the website. Yeah. Right. That's so cool. And so um, people can get a hold of you and they book, like they just need to go there and book 
Like, mm -hmm. so yours works a little bit differently. So they go to Lydia Hibby, L-Y-D-I-A-H-I-B-Y.com. I've got it in the chat there for everybody, or Dawn does. But how does, what does that process look like? So once they prepay, then I'll have a file and then they can, there's, my email is also there They if they want a specific time. But on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I have open hours, which for 12 hours. So people can just call whenever they can get it, whenever they want to get a hold of me. And then on Thursday and Friday and some other times I'll book exact times if they want the times. I used to do times and then people would, oh, I, I got stuck in traffic with my kids or I forgot about it or my animal got ill or something. So the open hours is nice. It's so it's just a random thing. And then the other two nights or the other times, if they want specific time, I'm happy to accommodate them. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, so that's super cool. Can you, so can you, uh, another question came up, can you talk specific, and this is from Julie, Julie, I, I've ch chatted about her before. She has a, I know she has a dog that has a lot of medical issues. Mm -hmm. Can you help with that? Oh, yeah. If she wants to book a session with me, sure, I can absolutely do that. Right. And sometimes if it ends up running into two segments, okay, it does. I mean, if it's that much time and we need a half an hour, then I will do that. But usually I can get to them pretty quickly right away. So it depends on what she wants. Yes, you've always been very generous with us. and I, I, I try. <laughs> um, and what about like if somebody wants to learn learn well i'm learning how to zoom hooray i'm coming into the 21st century <laughs> i'm going to start doing virtual seminars i'm still kind of getting my feet wet so everybody has you all have it locked in and so i'm learning but i'm going to start <laughs> doing that and i think what i'll do is I, i'll teach the morning which is actually three hours of instruction and then we'll we'll break and maybe for like later in the day or a second day we'll actually do a practice session where we'll just have different pictures and, and kind of like i run the class when I'm in person or if people want me to come and teach a class in person, I'm right. ready to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. And now that you live in Florida, like, and you're like four and a half hours from us. Exactly. Like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. It was oh fun God. when we did it at your house. It was, we had a blast. That was great. I know. I know. We're going to have, we're going to have to do that again. We're mm -hmm. going to have to do that again. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I've, I've, I've got a reiteration of yes, we need to do that again. So, um, super cool. I can't believe an hour is already gone by. I know. Thank you for having me. I appreciate we, it. You know how much we absolutely love and adore you. And um, amazing that um, God blessed us with bringing you into our life. Mm -hmm. Back um, at you. <laughs> I mean, you've also been one of our biggest supporters um, from the and biggest cheerleaders from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we are so grateful for that. And then of course, all of your expertise um, you. and helping us get unstuck from things. Mm -hmm. So um, any parting words of wisdom for our people? No, I just, I just, I love being able to share my gift, but everybody's blessed with it. And I just remember, I was the biggest skeptic. I mean, that's why I thought God had a really great sense of humor. Like, I'm going to make you the person to teach everybody. I was like, what? Really? Because I really thought I was just going to be a vet tech for the rest of my life. And it was a great occupation. But this is really, it's been such a blessing. Every day I just wake up and go, wow, I'm so fortunate I get to do this and help people. So I feel very blessed. I, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but it's, been brought into my consciousness like five times so I feel like I have to bring it up now um remember the trip that we you invited us to take that we couldn't because we were starting our business mm -hmm. oh I, I missed that one <laughs> um, and and you're in Florida now and mm -hmm. we, we have a boat now Woohoo! and there's dolphins dolphins everywhere Right? Yeah, sure. Why not? We can figure that out. We'll have to have right? a chat about that. <laughs> you know, what I'm talking about, y'all, is that uh, Lydia partnered up with some people and like they'd go out in the boat in the Bahamas. They just go out on a boat trip, snorkeling, snorkeling, snorkeling trip. And mm -hmm. if the dolphins happened to come by. And they always he, did. We had a blast. <laughs> you would always communicate with them and, and, and involve the people that are, were around her. And Brian and I, I mean, it was just sounded like the most magical thing on the planet. 
and I'm sure it still is. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to make that happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's a bucket list item. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I also have wonderful clients in Hawaii that do it too. So I can always give people referrals to them too. They're amazing. And it's only wild dolphins. That's it. Nothing else. So. (laughs) Correct. No, but we want you. Oh, okay. I twist my own. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so again thank you so much for joining us um learned always learned a lot always learned a lot thank you. Uh, whenever we chat with you um lydia hibby you can find her online we will also um include her website link we will be emailing out a replay of this recording to you guys tomorrow and we'll include her website on there. And um, you guys don't get stuck. Like you guys know what we do for a living. Um, we always get stuck, not always, but there's the experts even get stuck. The people that are in businesses always get stuck. So don't be afraid to reach out. And for $60, like I banged my head against the wall with my horse's issues for months. And then I was like, oh yeah, $60. Come on, Donna, that was dumb. She got me unstuck in 15 minutes. When the timing is right. <laughs> when the timing is right, right? When the, when the what is it? When the, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher. The teacher will- shows up. Yep. Mm-hmm. I know. I love mm-hmm. That. Mm-hmm. So, um, so thank you again. Thank you everybody for joining us. Please, uh, if you feel so inclined to reach out to Miss Lydia, please do so. She really is a superhuman and amazing with Thank the you. animals. And if you would like, uh, if you would like to host a class, or if you would like to take a class from her, either reach out to us or reach out to her, and um, we can maybe help her with imparting a little bit of our business know-how and helping her with the online classes. Um, so and it looks like she's going to be a little busy because I see people are already booking times with you oh, well, as good. they're on your speaking. So if you need to Yay. get in with her, you might want to get on the website <laughs> book in. Right? Right? Happy to help. Happy to help. Yay. So thank you guys for joining us, Ms. Lydia, as always. <laughs> always amazing to thank see you. you to be in your energy oh thank you <laughs> we'll work on the dolphin trip we'll definitely do that there you go yes exactly, <laughs> exactly. so all right everybody stay safe stay healthy uh don't talk baby talk to your animals and uh give them lots of love thank you thank you